Hello out there in cyberspace. This is Blue Star, Defender of Equestria. And this is the first of my character videos. Today we will be covering Princess Celestia. Is she evil or is she good? Well, I think she's good. I think she's actually very good. <laughs> Certainly, um, the writers were definitely portraying her as a good character, not as an evil one, but it's... I could be understanding how some people could look at Celestia and not see a, a great leader. Because, well, there's been a lot of times where she has not been a great leader, where there's wondering, where the heck is Celestia? Why is she letting all this stuff happen? Why did she put the f entire fate of Equestria in Twilight's hands? Well, the answer to that one's easy. She trusts Twilight. She believes in Twilight. But the other times when she's not there, mm, it gets a little harder. But my opinion on Celestia has always been... Ooh, you're, I don't think I'm going to make any friends with this opinion, or the opinions that are to come. But I look at her as being the surrogate parent to Twilight, and perhaps the other main six as well. She really does meant to be a, a parent figure. And considering that the main six are about like 15 years old, it makes sense for her to not always be there for them, to not always jump in and fix their problems for them, because frankly, at that age, that's exactly what you don't want to do. You want your, ch you want your children to be able to stand on their own and to learn to grow. I think this is the, one of the hardest things of being a parent, which, of, of course, I'm not. <laughs> but at this stage, you have to know when to be there for your child and when to let them fall flat on their face and pick themselves up and solve their own problems, which is something that I discovered during... Uh, when I was recording Blue Star 1, that Luna gave me this big speech about um, how really the two princesses are really not geared to being there and being what the main six sometimes need, which is sometimes they need um, a friend or a companion or a protector, and they can't really do that. Okay, I'm going to try to get into character here into Luna with Luna. It's like, sometimes we know it's what's best for them is... For the people to solve their own problems that we can't always be there for them we can't solve their problems for them this is something they have to do themselves this is what the main six are all about we could go down to ponyville and fix all their problems without even trying but what would be gained what would be learned how would they grow this is something we cannot do for them this is something they can only do for themselves and i know i've probably not made a lot of friends with that statement because reality of our world is that people are still waiting for the government to come down on a big white horse and save us all and make us happy and everything. Ironically, in this case, the government is a white horse, but it's not her job to come down and make everything perfect and happy and everything for everybody. Her job is to, well, govern her people and to be there for them when she tr they truly need her. <laughs> and interestingly, for the most part, Celestia has never had to intervene directly for except two times. Once in um, in Lesson Zero, where Twilight has messed everything up so badly that basically it's beyond her control or anybody else's control in Ponyville, and she has to come down and fix everything. And it's like, and I remember, it's like Twilight Sparkle coming down. It's like it sounds like an it sounds like a parent coming down to scold a child after they've like broken a vase or something. <laughs> And the other time that she had to intervene was uh, during Canterlot Wedding, and sadly, because of the circumstances of the story, she had to fail. <laughs> and I'm going to go into depth on that in another video. But Celestia to be, although we don't really know a lot about her, I still like her a lot. I believe that her character is much like a character called Delenn from a series called Babylon 5. This was someone who was a very soft, caring, loving person who you could sit down and have a, a soul-touching conversation with, but the next moment she will be willing to strangle someone with her <laughs> with her bare hands and stuff like that. But it's not in a cliche bad way. This is part of her character. She's a very strong character, but she's also very loving and kind. And I think her character is so cool. <laughs> she has a great line. She has one of the greatest lines in the entire show where basically <laughs> withdraw. Be destroyed. Negative. We have authority here. Do not force us to engage your ship. Why not? Only one human captain has ever survived battle with the Minbari fleet. He is behind me. You are in front of me. 
If you value your lives, be somewhere else. This is such a great line. And I honestly think this is Celestia's character. For the most part, we see the soft, caring, motherly side, but we know that that hard, I will not let you hurt my people side is in there. It just hasn't had an opportunity to be expressed in any meaningful way. And sadly, the only time it was, unfortunately, she had to lose. Because if she had managed to defeat Chrysalis, it would have been a very short story. It's like, yay, she beat Chrysalis. Yay, hooray, let's have a party. <laughs> And, well, the rest of the episode would have been kind of pointless. But I don't think that Celestia is manipulating Twilight for her solely her own benefit. I mean, I think, yes, yeah, she is manipulating Twilight to eventually take her place, and you could argue that's a selfish goal, but honestly, I don't think it is. I mean, I think she does generally care about Twilight, and she wouldn't put, if she didn't, she wouldn't put the fate of Equestria in her hands. Literally. I mean, her hooves. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I like Celestia, even though we don't know a lot about her. I mean, I have to say, after watching Bernie Curious's video, I was shaken quite a bit because I could understand how people could, could see that, how people could look at her that way and see her being manipulative and, and guiding Twilight on this path that eventually leads her to basically being, in a way, Celestia's equal. I mean, she's an alicorn at the end of season three that basically puts her on the same playing field as uh, Celestia. <laughs> And we've seen that Twilight's very magically powerful and someday will most likely replace um, Celestia. Hmm, how that happens is going to be interesting because I don't see Celestia just simply standing aside. I mean, we don't know the rules of, of, of how she works. Like, obviously, the big question with her is she's over a thousand years old. Is, does she, is she immortal? I mean, if I was immortal, I wouldn't want to give up my job like this. I mean, unless I hated it, but she seems to not hate her job, perhaps not love it either, but she seems reasonably happy, so I don't see why she would simply step aside. My ever thought is that, well, she could, well, die, but this is my little pony and this is something I don't think they could do. I mean, you know, they could never do something like that. I mean, they could find a way, but I don't think that's likely. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that she's just going to retire. She most likely will, but it just doesn't seem to make sense. But I definitely look forward to learning more about her and finding out what makes her tick. And obviously, where did she come from? I mean, some people think that she's God. And I don't think she's God, because obviously God... The idea of God is that God created the world and everything in it, and that's clearly not what Celestia and Luna have done. They have God-like powers, they control the sun and the moon, but that's it. And as we've seen in Canterlot Wedding, they're obviously not invincible either. They, well, she lost pretty badly. But, again, that that was simply a writing thing. She had to lose, because the, all the stories are about the main six, and if Celestia came down, fixed all the problems, there wouldn't be anything for the main six to do, and they wouldn't grow, they wouldn't evolve. They would just simply look to Celestia and just say, come and fix this for us, we've messed things up again, or we don't know how to fix this, and mm, again, I'm not making many friends here, because unfortunately, this is how I think our world and our culture is believing. We want someone to come down and just fix everything and make it all right. And I totally believe that is the absolute wrong thing to think because it clearly hasn't worked. The solution is not going to come from government. The solution is going to come from every single one of us finding a way to make things right again, to be there for each other and to help each other, not the government. And again, I don't think I've made many friends right now, <laughs> but that's how I feel and that's what I've... Um, what I think about when I think about Celestia that is why I think people are angry at her and why they don't like her is because they think that she should come down and fix all of Ponyville's problems and but no in the end that won't solve anything that won't serve them but I could be wrong maybe she's secretly evil I don't think she is though I don't think she was ever meant to be I think she was meant to be a warm motherly figure because she's the only pony that's actually an adult size she's the only one that's actually a, a full-grown pony and she's a thousand years old and stuff but so from that it just seems to be that she's meant to be the you know supervising adult that uh, supposed to be kind of like looking after the main six and sort of guiding them and reminding them what they're trying to do and learn and, and help them to grow and hopefully become uh, better uh, people so 
I think Celestia is still a pretty cool character, and I would certainly like to have a mentor like her. I mean, she's trying to teach Twilight how to become the highest level person that she could possibly be. She's trying to teach her how to be the, the greatest, most powerful being in Equestria. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't you want someone to do that for you if that was your destiny? That'd be awesome. But still, um, I do have to say that uh, my, I, I definitely look at her in a slightly darker attitude after watching uh, Brony Curious's video, which I have to say is why I'm very nervous about watching other people's videos, especially other people's f uh, fan works, because some of them are pretty scary and disturbing and sometimes can really al dramatically alter how you look at the show. So, but still, I still feel that Celestia is a good character. At the very least, she was definitely meant to be a good character. She wasn't meant to be this big, deceptive, evil character that some people make her out to be. She's not meant to be like uh, Darth Sidious, manipulating all these forces simply for her own benefit. You know, that's not what her character is. That's not what she's supposed to be. She's definitely supposed to be a, a warm, loving, almost motherly figure for the main six and definitely Twilight. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but that's how I feel. One thing I should have stated in my introductory video is that I am not going to hide how I feel. I'm not going to apologize or be ashamed of the way I feel, because I feel differently about a lot of different things, and this is one of them. I think Celestia is still a good character, and I like her. I may not know a lot about her, but I've decided that I still like her. Perhaps not as much as I did before, but I still like her a lot. So, that's my first character video. This is Blue Star. Stay strong and pony on. Blue Star out.